So that's a charlatan investing for you. My Bernie bucks. I have, uh, I have both made a good return on my investment so far. And I have demonstrated that these charlatans are not always right when they accuse these corporations of making record profits. So today I want to uh, look back at this video I made about seven months ago titled Using Bernie Sanders Rants as Investment Advice. Because I started doing this. I bought a bunch of uh, shares in various companies that people like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren and Robert Reich and all the other g -g -g goons, loons, and buffoons in America's political class. All the times they complain about greedy corporations and how obsessed they are with making profits. <laughs> Anyway, here's the video. Uh, as you can see, it's I put it up seven months ago, but uh, since it's been seven months, I thought we would take a look at how uh, I've been doing since. And I, I first want to say, I want to remind everyone, this is not, I want to make this clear, this is not investment advice. This is mostly for entertainment purposes, mostly for my own amusement. And hopefully we all learn something from, uh, from this exercise, from this recurring bit that I'm doing. So I invest my own money in a variety of companies that are condemned by politicians, accused of being too greedy and making record profits. And uh, here's the uh, numbers that I had from last time. As you can see, I bought Kroger. About a year ago, I bought one share of Kroger at $55.59. And uh, seven months ago, I reported that the shares were at about $46, if I'm recalling correctly. So let's see how Kroger is doing now. Let's see how Kroger is doing now. This is according to the Wall Street Journal. Kroger right now is at about $48.00. And 52 cents per share. Now, it's also worth noting that we've uh, gotten some updates about Kroger within the last seven months. We've uh, gotten news reports that they are trying to buy Albertsons. And as a result, you had people like Bernie Sanders and Robert Reich accusing Kroger of becoming a big, scary monopoly. Woo! Of course, I don't think this um, merger has been finalized because I don't know if you guys know this, but here in our um, unfettered, unregulated capitalist system, uh, I guess if two parties, if they want to merge, if one company wants to buy another company first, they have to uh, beg a variety of different politicians and judges and government bureaucrats. I guess this is what unfettered capitalism uh, looks like to a lot of knuckleheads. Right now, when we have this no holds barred, wild west hyper capitalism. Blow it out your ass. So I don't think this deal is finalized. I hope I hope it is, though. I hope uh, Kroger makes uh, a lot more profits because the price of my share, the value of my share, has went down by about 12%. So if I were to sell this, I would lose uh, a little bit of money. And ever since then, I've only been making about a quarter, a quarter of a dollar each quarter ever since. So I'm not even making 2% a year in annual returns on this investment, which means I'm losing money when you start to factor in inflation. But I guess these are the record profits that people like uh, Bernie Sanders are complaining about. Record profits. In fact, let's look at Kroger's uh, profits. This is according to Macro Trends. I guess, um, I guess this is what record profits looks like. Like you don't really see a noticeable dramatic spike over the last couple of years, despite uh, the accusations that Kroger is jacking up prices to squeeze consumers so that they can make record profits. I don't know. I'm not seeing it. It looks like they had a much better year pre-pandemic in 2018 than they have since the pandemic. Not like politicians care much about facts these days, but hopefully things turn around for Kroger. But uh, why don't we take a look at another company? Why don't we take a look at uh, Amazon? Because um, seven months ago, 
during this segment, uh, I sold a few shares of different companies that I made some good capital gains on and I decided to use my liquidated funds to buy shares in different companies. And one of those companies was Amazon. And do I really have to explain Amazon? I mean, Amazon has been maligned for about a decade at this point. Everyone accusing them of being a big, scary monopoly. Being a greedy corporation that only cares about profit. So last August, I bought a share of Amazon at $134. How's Amazon looking today? Why don't we look on the Wall Street Journal? Amazon, here we go. Amazon. Amazon today is now trading at $102 a share, meaning I've lost roughly 30% of value on my Amazon stock. And to make matters worse, uh, Amazon does not pay dividends. So uh, I'm not making any money on this Amazon investment. I thought this was a safe bet because I'm always hearing about how they're a big scary monopoly and how greedy they are and how obsessed with profits they are. Why don't we take a look at Amazon's profits? Because I think this is worth noting. Amazon, if we look at their profits, they actually lost money. According to Macro Trends, they lost over two and a half billion dollars in 2022. So uh, it looks like I'm stuck with this uh, Amazon share at this point, unless I want to lose about 30%, which I don't. So hopefully, hopefully Amazon figures out a way to be a little greedier in the future because uh, I want to make some money. <laughs> Next, look, let's look at uh, Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola. Let's take a look at Coca-Cola uh, a couple years or about a year ago. Let me bring the chart back up right here. It looks like I bought Coca-Cola at about $58 for one share of Coca-Cola. How is Coca-Cola looking today? Looks like it's at about uh, $63, just shy of $63. So doing pretty good. Not much to say about Coca-Cola. I bought this because Robert Reich, this was one of the companies that Robert Reich was complaining about. Robert Reich, uh, he was trying to scapegoat corporate greed for inflation. And Coca-Cola was one of those companies that he did in a very dishonest way, in my opinion. Go check out that video. Um, I did a response to his video where he did this. But overall, Coca-Cola, they've, uh, they've been paying good dividends. So not much to say about Coca-Cola. I'm pretty satisfied with my investment at this point. Uh, why don't we take a look at Walmart? Walmart for decades has been maligned, been accused of being a big, scary monopoly. And this is a point that uh, I often repeat because uh, Walmart's a big, scary monopoly. Kroger's a big, scary monopoly. Amazon's a big, scary monopoly. And they're all involved with uh, retail and grocery at this point, less so Kroger on the retail end. But um, I guess all, all three of them are big, scary monopolies. But how am I doing on Walmart? So um, we recall the chart, Walmart. I bought one share of Walmart at $142. So how is uh, Walmart doing right now? Well, according to the Wall Street Journal, Walmart is now trading at $150.80 a share. So um, another uh, win not sure if I want to unload this one yet. Uh, the, divid the dividends that Walmart pays are not great. I've read reports that Walmart, I guess this is according to, um, where is it? I had an article up here. Here it is. I guess according to Fox News, just the other day, Walmart expects 65% of their stores to be serviced by automation by 2026. And I'm really hoping... I am really hoping that they save a lot on money, save a lot on cost by doing this, and I hope they uh, pass those savings on to me, the shareholder. You're goddamn right. So uh, I'm looking forward to Walmart. Next, why don't we take a look at Chevron? Chevron, I bought one share of Chevron at $166. How is Chevron looking today? 
take a look at uh, Chevron. According to the Wall Street Journal, Chevron is trading at about $167 a share. Not much volatility there. Um, it does look like Chevron, they've been accused of, uh, you know, big oil, as we know, has been maligned for years, not for just being greedy corporations, but also for uh, destroying the planet uh, by creating climate change. But also, uh, they've been accused of making uh, record profits, which according to Macro Trends, it looks like their profits have uh, spiked as of late. Of course, uh, the politicians uh, who want to uh, increase taxes, impose new taxes, and restrict fossil fuels in the name of saving the planet from climate change, they will all, all these same G -g -g goons, loons, and buffoons will also turn around and bitch and moan that uh, this increased costs and therefore prices increase. So I guess if uh, there are these people, if their policies, I guess if these uh, politicians' policies end up uh, causing me to pay more at the pump for gasoline, I might as well try to make up for it by getting a piece of companies like Chevron so I can uh, get a little bit of a piece of these big oil profits. <laughs> All right, next, why don't we take a look at Starbucks? Starbucks, if you recall, I bought one share at $82.33. So why don't we take a look at Starbucks? How is Starbucks doing today? Well, according to the Wall Street Journal, Starbucks is trading at about $104. So an increase of about 20% over the last year. <laughs> so Bernie Sanders was being a total g -g -g goon to Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz last week, dragging him in front of Congress, wasting his time to berate Howard Schultz about allegedly being a union buster. Blow it out your ass. Meanwhile, Starbucks is a company that uh, pays a minimum wage of $17 an hour before benefits. According to Howard Schultz in its testimony in front of Congress, the average Starbucks worker, I think, makes $27 an hour when you count the benefits, which, surprise, surprise, it's still not enough for a socialist g -g -g goon like Bernie Sanders. But either way, I got to thank, I got to thank Howard Schultz because uh, Starbucks is uh, the big winner on this edition. I'm almost up 20% on my investment, and I think I'm just going to take the money and call this one a win. Especially when we take a look at the next share that I bought, which was uh, Tyson Foods, which I bought at $86.75. If you recall, Tyson was maligned by a lot of politicians because I guess they're a big meat packing monopoly because them along with three other uh, meat packing companies. I guess they control roughly 84% of the meat pack, the beef packing industry. I guess this makes uh, Tyson a big, scary monopoly. So uh, I heard Tyson was making rec record profits as a result. And I thought a year ago, maybe I should get a piece of those uh, record profits from Tyson Foods. So let's take a look at how Tyson is doing. Let's take a look at how Tyson Foods is doing. And according to the Wall Street Journal, Tyson is trading at about $59 a share. Which means uh, I'm down over $20, over 20% on this investment. Uh, and even if we look at, you know, we, you often hear record profits when hearing about Tyson, about when they're maligned. If you look at uh, their actual numbers, again, this is according to Macro Trends, um, it looks like Tyson's profits have actually declined each quarter ever, uh, ever since September of 2021. Although maybe you could say this period it was still much higher than previous years, but uh, as of December, 
31st of 2022. I mean, their earnings uh, have been kind of uh, in line with their pre-COVID earnings. So uh, it looks like uh, I might have missed out on Tyson's record profits. But uh, between the cash that I already have on hand, which uh, I've also lost money on after the last uh, episode, I think I had over uh, $150 in cash on hand that I did not reinvest, which again means I've lost money due to inflation. And the cash that I'm going to have going forward because of trading Starbucks, I have over $200 to spend. So now I'm thinking... Which greedy corporations should I invest in next? I have some ideas. Why don't we take a look at some of these companies that are often accused of being a part of uh, what is called the military industrial complex. Uh oh, spaghetti. Because uh, especially ever since Russia, under the leadership of Vladimir Putin, has invaded Ukraine, you've had a lot of um, idiots trying to blame the war on the uh, military-industrial complex and weapons contractors, big, greedy weapons manufacturers who want to prolong this war so that they can make some more money. <laughs> One of these companies I often hear about is this company called Lockheed Martin. So again, I have about $200 to uh, reinvest right now. And I looked into Lockheed Martin. And it looks like uh, they're a little bit out of my price range. They're trading at $490 a share at the moment. A little out of my price range, so I decided to also take a look at uh, Raytheon. They're often uh, accused of being part of the military-industrial complex. Raytheon, it looks like, is trading at about $98 a share. It looks like it's been on a decline. You, you would think uh, Raytheon's uh, stock would be through the roof. So, yeah, Raytheon, it's been roughly the same uh, over the last year. You would think their stock price would be through the fucking roof with how much they're accused of prolonging this war. No, this war is not Vladimir Putin's fault. Or Russia's fault. No, it's the military-industrial complex's fault who want to prolong this war so they can make a, a, a few extra dollars. But that's what I think I'm going to do. I think I'm going to buy a share of Raytheon going forward. And I'm going to add that to my portfolio. $98.21 a share, especially after unloading Starbucks. Some other uh, companies I had in mind, I thought about maybe buying a share of Live Nation. Live Nation. Let's uh, let's bring that up really quick. Live Nation. The reason... Uh, oh, oh, oops. Oops, Wall Street Journal. Better alert. Get your shit together. Okay, Live Nation. Only $69 a share. I could afford it with the funds that I have, but uh, I'm going to lay off Live Nation. Uh, the reason why I bring up Live Nation is because they own... Ticketmaster and a lot of politicians are maligning Ticketmaster or accusing Ticketmaster of being a big scary monopoly. But uh, from what I've seen, Ticketmaster does not really make much money. Their income is pretty um, variant, volatile. What word am I looking for? Volatile. Their income is pretty volatile, up and down. So I consider Live Nation. Um, I think I'm going to lay off Live Nation. I also thought about some of these railroad companies. Some of these uh, railroad giants. Because ever since uh, there was talk of a railway workers strike in the fall of 2022, I did videos about this. I was reading all of these tweets and memes and reports of these big greedy railroad companies doing stuff like uh, firing employees, disregarding safety standards so that they can uh, make a few extra dollars. So I looked into some of them. One of them is BNSF, which is owned by Berkshire Hathaway, which is way out of my price range. I also uh, looked at uh, Norfolk Southern, which, uh, as we know, they had their uh, terrible railway accident just uh, a couple months ago. Um, I guess they're trading at about $200 a share, which has only been on a decline, especially since February. They've just been on a steady decline. Not so sure I want to invest in uh, Norfolk Southern, if I'm being honest. But uh, either way, I'm laying off Ticketmaster. I'm laying off the railroad companies. 
Because you know who else I had my eye on when thinking about a big, greedy corporation to invest in? One of those companies I thought of is uh, Moderna. Because, you know, they're part of uh, Big Pharma. And uh, Moderna, to my knowledge, I don't think they pay any dividends, so this is a pretty big risk. Uh, Moderna has been in the news uh, as of late because uh, they're developing a lot of vaccines and new treatments for cancer, which is cool. I think is great. I think is wonderful. It looks like the mRNA technology might be a boon for Moderna long term, but... Uh, I don't know if uh, I get stuck uh, with Moderna. Again, they peaked in August of 2021, it looks like, at $484 a share. So they have, uh, one could say they've actually declined over the last couple of years. Pfizer is another one I was looking at, another one of these big pharma companies. They've been maligned lately. I think uh, they were maligned because uh, Bernie Sanders was all mad that they might uh, jack up the price of their mRNA vaccine to over $100 per dose. But, I mean, Big Pharma, they're always maligned. They were maligned long before COVID. Long before COVID. So uh, it looks like Pfizer is trading at about $41 a share. So I think going forward, I'm going to buy one share of Pfizer one share of Raytheon and see if I can get a piece of the profits from uh, the big, scary, big pharma and military industrial complex companies. Let's see if they can uh, make me some more money. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, not a great seven months. Without selling my Starbucks stock, I would have only made about 1.4% for my dividends. Hopefully, things get better. Hopefully, these corporations get greedier and find out uh, how to make me more money. But overall, all things considered, about a year ago, I made uh, an $890 initial investment. And since then, I've made about $86. So, Roughly a 9.6% uh, return over the last year. I'm satisfied so far, although I'm a little worried getting stuck with this Amazon stock after being told how obsessed with profits they are and how greedy they are. But hopefully Amazon turns it around and hopefully the military industrial complex and big pharma can help me turn things around.